Hey listeners, this is Tetsuo, the storyteller. The following three scary stories are from the Hmong community. They were posted in the Hmong Ghost Stories page blog. This is part one out of three. I'm not sure who the writers are. So they will be credited as anonymous. If you are the writer or the person who experienced these incidences, please let me know. I shall go in and credit you. Some names and details have been edited to remove identifying features or to fix the flow of the story. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to Tetsuo Tells a Story on YouTube and podcast providers such as Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Okay, so let's get on with these three true Hmong scary stories. Part one out of three. Story 1, titled, Sleeping with the Dead. There was one really old monk couple that had no kids. Since they didn't really have anyone to take care of them, they were always short on money and didn't have any money for NAC during the summer. One night, the man told his wife, since it was so hot, they should move the beds right under the window and open the window so it wouldn't be so hot while they slept. The wife agreed and they moved the head of the bed right under the window. As they were sleeping, the lady felt something touch her face. So thinking that maybe it was just bugs, she whipped her face with her hands trying to get whatever it was to buzz off Then again, she felt something touching her face. She did the same thing once again. A few moments later, again, she felt something touching her face. This time, she was ticked off and tried to grab whatever was touching her face so she could squash it. As soon as she caught it, she noticed it wasn't a bug, but felt like a small hand. She opened her eyes and noticed she was holding on to a little hand that came from outside the window. She kicked her husband as he awoke. He witnessed what she was holding. A little in shock, he immediately looked outside to see if there was anyone right out by their window in case it was a burglar. What he saw was nothing but a really long arm that came from the woods which was about 20 feet away. He immediately told his wife to let go. As soon as she did, the hand shot back like a rubber band back to the forest. He told his wife what he saw, and immediately they freaked out and shut the window, being forced to stay up all night. There is an old saying that said something about how you aren't supposed to sleep like that because it meant you were welcoming the dead to come sleep with you or something. That's why the hand was bothering the old lady because it was searching for an open spot to come sleep. Story two titled Lady in Red. I experienced this when I was 10 years old a long time ago. My family and I were visiting our first cousins in Minnesota. 
during the July 4th tournament. It was the first time seeing them in a long time. They fled from Laos along with my parents when I was a little toddler. My aunt and uncle had a son that lives there and was around my age. We got along well, joked around, and played video games. Then on the third night, we were playing a game of truth and dare with my younger sister and his older brother and sisters. They were two to three years older. I was up and picked dare. My cousin dared me to go into the basement with the lights off. They say they sometimes see a Hmong lady in red down there and she comes up some nights. I was young and I was already scared and refused to go down to the basement alone. Later that night, while everybody was asleep besides my aunt and uncle because they were still up doing opium, I slept on their living room floor with two of my other cousins while my sister slept on the couch. My parents were sleeping in one of the rooms upstairs. I couldn't sleep because of the smell from the opium. All of a sudden, I noticed the doorknob on the basement door rattle like someone was trying to turn it. With just the moonlight shining into the living room, I could clearly see the doorknob slowly turn. The basement door squeaked as it slowly opened. That's when I thought about what my cousin had said about the Hmong lady in red. That's when I saw her stepping out around the door. She looked like a young woman in Hmong clothes, maybe in her 20s, and she was glowing transparent red. She walked by the couch where my sister and girl cousin were sleeping, just looking at them. Then the lady in red noticed me. I was frozen in fear. I didn't know if it was real or if it was just a dream. The lady saw me looking at her and started walking towards me. As she came around the corner of the couch, I didn't see her feet. It was as if she was floating. Now she was five feet away from me, getting closer and closer. I was frozen in fear. I couldn't yell for help and I couldn't move. As the lady in red was about two feet away from me, my mom turns on the light and the Hmong lady in red just vanishes into thin air like a magic trick. She was gone. No sight of her anywhere. But before she vanished, I saw her face as she turned her head around and back before my mom turned on the lights. She had this sad yet angry look on her face before she vanished. My mom came downstairs to talk to my aunt and uncle before we left in the morning. The next morning, I told my aunt and uncle and my parents about it. You know how adults usually tell kids it was just a dream or we were imagining things. But inside, they know what we saw. I'm in my mid-twenties now and I can still clearly remember how she looks like. Story three, titled, The Long Hair. Everything was great when my husband and I first moved into the new apartment in Fresno, California. We were finally getting our life started. We just moved out of the in-laws, not saying that I hated living there, but it was finally the real deal, living on your own, paying your own rent, buying your own food, and etc. I've always been the independent type, 
so it was exciting to get that kind of freedom back. Anyways, our apartment was small. The door opens to a small square shaped living room with a huge ocean view window. To the right is the kitchen with a small dining area. Once you enter the living room, straight ahead of you is a short hallway that leads to the bathroom and bedroom. The whole apartment floor was pale wood, except for the bathroom and the kitchen floor, which was a floral tile. The window panels were painted red. The apartment was small, but cozy, and a good place to start off our life. Plus, I liked how the apartments were a little further away from the usual busy areas of Fresno. It was more towards the farm area. When we first moved in, my father-in-law came and did a cleansing on the apartment because he's a very traditional Hmong man. Not saying that I'm not. For a matter of fact, I'm also very traditional. But I didn't think much of it because the apartments were newly built, roughly about two to three years old. After my father-in-law left, my husband and I spent a couple hours digging through our boxes. But once I grew tired of not knowing what to put where, I told the husband to take me to the store to get some furniture to put things on. We left and went to the store for a good four or five hours. It was dark by the time we got back, so we showered and immediately went to bed. We slept on the floor, of course. The next morning, my husband left early for work, so I decided to go move some of the boxes into the kitchen and dining area so that when the delivery guy gets here I can just have them set up whatever they needed to do but as I was moving the boxes around I kept noticing long strands of hair on the ground and some on and in the boxes it wasn't enough to be noticed right away but as I was moving more and more boxes I realized that it was pretty much spread throughout I knew it wasn't mine because I actually had a short A-line cut during that time. And of course, my husband had a clean cut. I didn't give it much thought because my sister-in-laws were helping us pack during the time we were moving out. And they both had pretty long hair, so I just thought it might have been theirs. Since we left the window open last night, we live on the second floor, the wind might have also blown the hair everywhere. After I finally finished moving the boxes and swept the floor, I went into the bedroom to put away our blankets to make room for the bed when I arrived. But as I was folding the blankets, I also noticed long strands of hair around the bedroom, but mostly right around the corner of where we slept last night. Honestly, I was a little freaked out, but decided to brush it off and just quickly sweep the room. Later that night, when my husband came home, I brought up the subject to him, but he just shrugged it off and suggested that it might have been his sister's, which somehow comforted me a little, and I just left it as is and left for work. I work night shifts. A couple of days later, I got up around noon when my husband had already gone to work. I decided to finish unpacking and maybe go out for a little grocery shopping. While I was cleaning and unpacking, I also noticed strands of long hair laying around the floor and furniture. This time there seemed to be more. I quickly went and checked the bedroom and noticed the hair inside the bedroom again. Then I went and slowly checked around the corners of the hallway and kitchen but didn't notice any more hair than one or two. Finally I went into the bathroom where my husband and I get ready in the morning but there were only evidence of our own short hair. I even went as far as checking the bed and pillow for hair because if our hair is falling out that much that it's filling the living room and bedroom, I kind of figured most would be on the pillows or bathroom. But once again, I only found evidence of our short hair. It was only a strand or two. I tried not to think much of it and quickly finished cleaning and mopping the whole apartment from corner to corner, then left for work. By the time I got off work, I completely forgot about the events in the morning because I was exhausted from a long night of work. 
and just wanted to get home and dive into bed and sleep. The whole apartment was dark when I opened the door to enter, indicating that my husband was probably asleep. So I decided not to turn on the lights to distract him. Instead, I turned the flashlight on my phone and guided my way towards the bedroom. I was planning to quickly grab some clothes, shower, and just get into bed. But as I opened the bedroom door, from the small amount of light coming through the window, I can make out the bump on the bed. My sleeping husband. But my eyes were quickly drawing to a silhouette of a woman standing beside him on the bed. The first thing that came to my mind was that he was cheating on me. So I quickly reached out and turned on the bedroom lights. I was ready to pounce on my husband. But right as the light came on, the silhouette figure suddenly disappeared right before my eyes. I felt a deep drop in my heart and my body suddenly grew weak. Before I knew it, my knees started shaking uncontrollably. I knew what I was feeling and it was pure terror. My husband quickly jumps out of bed like he's out of breath and looked at me like he was surprised to see me. I don't know if he even noticed the fear on my face, but before I could say anything, he jumped out of bed and flew right into my arms, shouting, Oh my gosh, thank you honey for waking me up. I had the worst nightmare ever. I felt like I couldn't move my body and like I was being sat on. What my husband said to me terrified me even more. But I decided not to say anything to him or scare him anymore. So I just quickly brushed off the fear and told him to go back to sleep. As I laid there in that bed that night, all I felt and heard was the pounding of horror in my heart. For sure, when those lights came on earlier, I believe what I saw was a long-haired, pale female woman towering over my husband with her eyes rolled back and a blue dead tongue hanging loosely at the side of her mouth. Thank you everyone for listening in on these three true scary monk stories. If you enjoyed these three stories, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to Tetsuo Tells a Story. Part 2 will be coming out. Again, you can find me on YouTube, podcast providers such as Anchor, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Do you have a story to tell? Let me know and I can tell it to the world. Until then, see you in the next episode.